Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the important multiple choice questions in the anti-angels. And in our previous video, we have already discussed the 10 important MCQs in the anti-angels. So this is the part two of this video series. 11th one. Which of the following drug belongs to the chemical category of phenyl alkyl amines? Options are A. Diltiazem, B. Nicorandyl, C. Verapamil, and D. Amlodipine. So here we have to select the drug which is chemically belonging to the phenyl alkyl amines. So the right answer is the Verapamil. Verapamil is one of the calcium channel blocker which is chemically belonging to the phenyl alkyl amines. Particularly here the phenyl group is attached with a butyl side chain. So Verapamil is a phenyl butyl amine. And this butyl amine can also be incorporated as another side chain that is the valeronitrile. So Verapamil is the valeronitrile derivative which is having the phenyl butyl amine moiety. 12th one. One of the important side effects of the calcium channel blocker Verapamil is A. Reflex tachycardia B. Bronchospasm C. Ankle swelling D. Constipation So one of the specific side effects that is produced by Verapamil. The right answer is the constipation. Verapamil is a calcium channel blocker. It can block the calcium channels at the different sites and it can also block the calcium channel at the GS smooth muscle, thereby decrease the motility of the GS smooth muscle resulting in the constipation. And this drug can also inhibit the rate of contraction of the heart resulting in the bradycardia, but it will not produce any tachycardia. So the option is the reflex tachycardia is going to be produced by another type of calcium channels like the nifedipine and amlodipine. And similarly option C is the ankle swelling which is observed with the direct vasodilators like the nifedipine and amlodipine. And finally, bronchospasm is not related with the verapamil as the significant side effect. So here constipation is the right answer for this question. 13th one. One of the main mechanisms for the development of tolerance towards organic nitrates is. Options are A. Induction of the metabolic enzymes. B. Depletion of the free thiol groups. C. Increased renal clearance. And D down regulation of the receptors. So when a drug is used for a longer period repeatedly, it may develop some tolerance. Tolerance is the decreased form classical response by repeated administration of the drug. And this tolerance can be developed by variable mechanisms. If a drug is going to induce the metabolic enzymes, then the drug metabolism may be increased, which results in the tolerance. Otherwise, if a drug is going to be more cleared from the renal system, again, the form classical action can be reduced. And if the drug is going to acting on the receptors and uh, these receptors are going to be down regulated, that means their number is going to be decreased. Then again, we can observe a reduction of the farm classical response. But here organic nitrates are developing the tolerance not by these mechanisms. And one of the important reason is the depletion of the free thiol groups. Organic nitrates can be expressed by formula RONO2. Simply they are the esters found by the nitric acid and the alcohol. Now from this organic nitrates, they can release the nitric oxide, which is one of the important mediator, which increases the cyclic GMP levels in the smooth muscle resulting in the vasodilatation. But in order to release this nitric oxide, this organic nitrate should interact with the enzymes, which are having the thiol groups. So by interaction with these thiol groups, organic nitrates can release the nitric oxide. And within this process, they can have both enzymatic as well as non enzymatic interactions. But the interaction of these organic nitrates with the free thiol groups is important for release of the nitric oxide. So when these organic nitrates are repeatedly used, all the free thiol groups are going to be occupied and they are saturated such that the next dose of the organic nitrates cannot release the nitric oxide resulting in the reduced form classical response. So here the B is the right answer for this question. 14th one. One of the important unwanted effect of the nitro vasodilators is Options are A. Convulsions B. Diarrhea C. Orthostatic hypertension D. Hepatitis Nitro vasodilators also called as organic nitrate show the different types of side effects and here we have to select the important side effect. So what will be the answer? The right answer is the C. Orthostatic hypotension. All we have seen the organic nitrates are going to release the nitric oxide. So that's why they are acting like the vasodilators. And because of these vasodilatory effects, they can produce few other side effects like headache, flushing, 
orthostatic hypotension and reflex tachycardia all these side effects are associated with the vasodilatory response so here one of the side effect of nitrovasodilators is the orthostatic hypotension and these drugs because of the vasodilatation they decrease the blood pressure which results in the activation of the baroreceptors by reflex action resulting in the increased rate of contraction of the heart leading to tachycardia so reflex tachycardia is one of the side effect produced by many of the direct vasodilators fifth one nitroglycerin is given by various routes of administrations select one of the following route that is not associated with this drug a rectal ointment b sublingual tablet c transdermal patch and d nasal spray so here we have to select the route of administration which is uh, not related with the nitroglycerin so nitroglycerin can be given by the different routes of administration here one of the route of administration is not related so what will be the answer the correct answer is the d nasal spray nitroglycerin is one of the drug which is having the high first pass metabolism so it can be given as a sublingual tablet or sublingual spray and it can also pass through the skin so it can be given as a transdermal patch and because of the first pass metabolism it can also be given as a rectal ointment and finally nitroglycerin is uh, volatile in nature so it can be given as an aerosol but it is not given as a nasal spray nitroglycerin is mainly given as the translingual spray that means this spray is going to be placed under the tongue such that the drug is directly entering into the systemic circulation avoiding the first pass metabolism so this route of administration is also called as sublingual spray in this way nitroglycerin can be given as a sublingual tablet or a sublingual spray 16th one tolerance developed by the organic nitrates can be eliminated by a use of high dose b use of low dose c maintaining nitrate free intervals d all of the above so all we have seen the organic nitrates develop the tolerance so by which measurement we can prevent the tolerance so here the right answer is maintaining the nitrate free intervals by adjusting the dose we cannot prevent the tolerance and all we have seen the development of tolerance is because of the depletion of the free thiol groups so when we maintain a nitrate free interval that means when the drug is not given for a certain period the thiol groups can be restored so maintaining the nitrate free intervals leads to the restoration of the free thiol groups which results in the again restoration of the activity of the organic nitrates in this way tolerance can be eliminated by maintaining the nitrate free intervals so organic nitrates when they are given as a transdermal patches they should be taken out during the sleep in order to produce a nitrate free interval 17th one which of the following drug is more selective for the cardiac muscle options are a diltiazem b nemodipine c verapamil and d nifedipine so which drug is highly selective for the cardiac muscle so here the right answer is the verapamil verapamil is one of the calcium channel blocker which is highly selective for the cardiac muscle thereby reduce the rate and force of contraction of the heart and it also produces the coronary vasodilatation so this drug is used as an antihypertensive antiarrhythmic agent as well as an antianginal agent on the other hand the other types of calcium channel blockers which are having the suffix dipin like the nemodipin and nifedipin these are the dihydropyridines which are selective for the smooth muscle so these drugs are acting like direct vasodilators by producing the vasodilatation by blocking the calcium channels on the vascular smooth muscle resulting in the direct vasodilatation so nemodipine and nifedipine are not acting on the cardiac muscle and we can also observe the third type of uh, calcium channel blocker that is the diltiazem now this diltiazem is selective for both cardiac muscle as well as the smooth muscle but it is not that much selective for the cardiac muscle so within these four options the verapamil is the one drug which is highly selective for the cardiac muscle 18th one which of the following drug is indicated for the cerebral vasospasm options are a nitroglycerin b nemodipine c verapamil and d nifedipine so we have to select the drug which is producing a vasodilatation at the cerebral blood vessels here all the drugs listed are the vasodilators 
but which drug is going to enter into the CNS and it produces the cerebral vasodilatation. So here the right answer is the nemodipine. Nemodipine is one of the drug which can enter into the cerebrospinal fluid so that it can enter into the CNS and it produces the cerebral vasodilatation. So this drug acts as a calcium channel blocker which produces cerebral vasodilatation. That's why it can be used in the treatment of cerebral vasospasm. So these are the various types of important questions in the antianginal agents. By taking the key points from each and every question, we can conclude the concept in the antianginals. So angin is a symptom of chest pain which is mainly observed because of the decreased coronary blood supply. And here, in order to relieve this angina, we can use the vasodilators which increase the coronary vasodilatation as well as decrease the peripheral resistance. And we can also use the other drugs like the beta blockers which are going to decrease the cardiac work. Thereby they decrease the cardiac oxygen consumption resulting in the increased cardiac efficiency. So here we have mainly three types of vasodilators, organic nitrates, calcium channel blockers and potassium channel activators. Organic nitrates are the main group of drugs which are used in the treatment of angina along with the calcium channel blockers. These calcium channel blockers are three types. Verapamil is selective for cardiac muscle. Diltiazem is selective for the both cardiac as well as smooth muscle. Whereas the dipins like the nifidipine, amlodipine, nemodipine, all these are selective for smooth muscle. Similarly, one of the potassium channel activators is the nicorandyl, which is both arterial as well as venular vasodilator which can be combined with the organic nitrates in the treatment of resistant angina. And we can also use the beta blockers like the propranol and metoprolol which are prophylactically given in order to decrease the angina. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.